Good morning, guys. It is Wednesday the 16th. I couldn't record yesterday because I was hopping flights to Birmingham. So I had to go from Arizona really early, get into, into uh, Dallas, then into Birmingham. By the time I got here, it was running around, getting checked in, picking up members of my team from the airport. They came out on later flights, then heading to dinner. Um, one of my favorite places in the world, Perry's, because their pork chop is amazing. If you ever find a Perry's in any town you're in, Dallas, Birmingham, I'm sure they're all over the place. I don't know how many there are out there, but if you ever find one, get that damn pork chop. 36 ounces of one of the amazing, most amazing things I've ever had. So, and then let me know that you got the pork chop and it kicked ass. And if it didn't kick ass, don't talk to me about it. So as far as uh, the market today, um, interesting stuff, of course, you know, we've seen what's been happening with the uh, interest rates going up, of course, inflation. But some of the things that I've been, uh, been paying attention to was the producer price index that came out uh, yesterday. And it showed that uh, it's went up 1% from where the previous reading was. That was double the expectation. So what's a producer price index? That's when people are making things to sell. They've got to buy stuff to make that, right? Sometimes in that production, it might be fuel. We'll look at what fuel costs are doing. What's that that's meaning is what they've got to acquire to make the product for you is going much higher in price for them because of that. So now we have that increased inflation there. Well, double what was anticipated is, is a big damn deal, right? So inflation is definitely continuing to keep grinding at us and keep causing us grief. So that's something that's really important. The other thing that I found interesting, so I looked and I had uh, another service that I look at and they brought this up, uh, the consumer sentiment. This is very interesting because when you're talking about everybody saying that our, our economy, talk, we start talking, we start thinking, uh, or at least listening to the uh, the politicians out there. They're trying to say the economy is awesome. My jobs are getting, are, are improving. Well, people are going back to work, right? I don't know that that's a job, that we're seeing a job market improving. We're showing people getting back into it and they're not even getting in the hours that they were getting before. So in my opinion, I, don't, I personally don't see a job market that's improving. I see a job market that's recovering. When you start looking at this, this is the consumers and what they feel. They're, you know, they're how do they feel uh, uh, good about the economy? Do they feel good about where the prices are. Are they going to go out there and continue to, exp to, to purchase? Well, look at this. This is pre-recession, right? Great recession. We had uh, people buying like crazy and then everything fell off. This is when that crash happened in 2008. Look at this where it bottomed out, right? Well, then it's crawling back. It's slowly crawling back. But look at where this fell the hell off. We're, we're approaching levels of, of that time right around the crash when it comes to consumer sentiment. This is an alarming chart uh, to look at. So our economy is not so damned awesome. You know, what we've got is a lot of rhetoric. What we have is a lot of people that are talking about the economy in a, in a way of trying to make them look better and, and convince people that uh, whatever information they're going to give whatever uh, skewed data that they provide that things are better than it really is uh, economically we're not seeing the strength that they're trying to tell us as as evidence right here now looking at where we are with the uh, mortgage back securities charts i'm looking at the 4.0 today we've got finally hopefully this is some stability here we've hammered into this place i, I pray that we've gotten this uh, floor of support that's going to put us here because all this movement has done you see these negative days, these drop days, these days have had a lot of volatility. All that's done is it, it puts, I hate to use fear, but fear in, 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 the, in the minds of those individuals who are pricing out these interest rates for us. Because when they release the rates and then people start locking and the market moves rapidly, that puts them in a position of loss because they still have to sell some security, give them some sort of uh, uh, buffer in, in the market to, to avoid losing on uh, giving you money. Well, think about this, guys. We've talked about it over and over and over again. They're losing anyway. Anybody who borrows money at today's rates today, even though we're approaching 5% and in some cases over 5% for a 30-year uh, fixed on a, for an investor. Uh, and we also showed that last time that I talked here at CNBC is showing over 4% for your owner occupied. Person buying a house and financing it for 30 years in today's market with inflation, even inflation that it's been in the past, back when it was three and four percent, inflation was over over eight, right? That's why my app I'm using eight percent inflation. It's been over eight for a hell of a long time. In those conditions, all those conditions, nobody's making money by lending you money for 30 years. They're just not. And so take advantage of the fact they're doing that. And since they're doing it, don't ever slow down. Find the deals that work. And remember, your job. Find to work with the right people, purchase the right 
property, the right asset, the right business is really what it is that will continue to attract renters for a reasonable, reasonably for the entire time you own it that you can raise rents on. Look at those first couple of years of rent raises, what that does. Don't freak out because you ran your numbers at four and a half percent and now it's at five, right? Or maybe it's going to be five and a quarter in the future. Maybe it's going to be six in the future. When you run your numbers and now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're not that massive positive cash flow, but you're at least paying the bills, right? Maybe have a few bucks coming in. See what the rent raise is at three or seven or 6%. I'm in Alabama where you're doing 8% rent increases. What 8% is going to be year over year for the next two years. Then see where you're going to be at. You'll see a massive difference there. It takes just a couple of years to, to smooth all that out. And you don't, and it's all in the past at that point. Don't allow today's interest rates to, to push you away from building your business. Let that to, let that push the other people away. When they're not looking or they're freaking out, go eat out of their dog dish. Go take the real estate from them that they should have bought because they got scared. Let them get scared. You don't. I'll talk to you guys on Friday when I have more information to throw out there. And hopefully there's more data to come out there to give us a little bit of indication that things will soften a bit. And we'll find a little bit of a floor in the market. Talk to you soon, guys.